any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. This is the town of Sunland Park. To someone just passing through, it's merely a wide spot in the road. A pleasant little place with a park and a playground for children. Nothing of any significance could have happened there. But the residents of this town, especially Mrs. Bernie Sills, knew this to be untrue. The highway patrol knew it too. For recent events in Sunland Park had been far too significant in terms of violence and tragedy. Want to go home and take a nap or something? I'll watch the place. Okay. You call me if you get feeling tired. to stop here. Bernie, what are you doing? Three guesses. Bernie, please, don't start anything more. I'll just make sure they don't start anything. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi. Want some breakfast? Yep. What's your specialty? Good food, mostly. That's what we're after. Good food and lots of it. We've been bucking those sickle supplies for more than an hour. Kind of shakes up an appetite. Then you better get back on those sickles and take off. Honey, you ain't gonna feed these bums, are you? Bums? Say, does that guy know you, Joe? I don't think they're bums, Bernie. They're bums, all right. Motorcycle bums. Look at them. Now, look, mister, we just came in here for breakfast. We're not looking for any trouble. And we'll make sure you don't start any. Now, come on, out. Say, what kind of gag is this? Better do what he says, boys, please. Come on, Nick. Wait a minute. I don't think I like being shoved around by a... Come on. Would it break your heart, mister, to tell us what this is all about? You ought to know. You hoodlums have got a lot of gold stopping in this town again. Again? Well, this is the first time we've ever been up this way. And the last time, too. Now, you get on those cycles and get out. Now, take it easy, mister. We're not leaving here till we know why. You guys seem to have short memories. Only eight months ago, a whole gang of you bums came roaring into this town, riding your cycles on the sidewalks, into the store windows, knocking people down, breaking up our property and trampling up our picnic grounds. A whole mob of bums. Loud mouthed, dirty hoodlums and leather jackets. You turned this town upside down. Well, listen, that wasn't our club. We've never even been here before. Not much, you haven't. Take a look at my wife in our cafe there. She knows you were here. One of your cycles knocked her down and broke her hip. She hasn't walked right since. Hello. Hello. Get me the highway patrol. Yes, quick. Now, you get out of here, fast. You shove that gun into me once more, mister, now. Come on, Nick, let's go. Why should we? We had nothing to do with that raid. That was another club. Another club. Well, you're all alike, all you wise guys in the leather jackets and the big mouths. Watch that talk, mister. I mean it. Come on, forget it, Nick. Cut out. And make it fast. Nick, cut it out! I'm all right. I, I called the highway patrol. They should be here soon. Patrol? The gun.
It's two men on motorcycles, officer. They better get them. They're dangerous. Starting trouble. Slugging people and everything. They went right down the highway there. Matthews. Who? What did happen? I'll be out there as soon as I can. What's up? Anders cracked up his bike. He's in bad shape. Anders? He was on call. He crashed into a truck. Let's get out there right away. Come on. The injured officer was already on his way to the hospital when the truck driver told his story of the collision. He readily admitted having run the boulevard stop. After further questioning, he was released pending his appearance in court. Mr. and Mrs. Sills were eager to return to their unattended cafe, but they were even more eager to answer routine questions with unroutine statements. Yeah, but it's those cycle bums who caused it. That patrolman was chasing after them when he hit that truck. Did you see it happen? No. No, we heard the screech of brakes and a crash, and, and then we went out there. But the point is, that officer wouldn't be in the hospital right now if they hadn't come into town. In other words, their coming to town had nothing to do with the collision, is that right? Suppose that officer dies. What happens to the truck driver? Well, if Officer Ander dies, the truck driver's gonna face a manslaughter charge. Well, that ain't fair. It's those two men on motorcycles who ought to be punished. They come zooming into town, just aching to start trouble. Last year, just eight months ago, 50 of them swooped down on this place, scaring kids to death, breaking up our property. Run my wife down and broke her hip, that's what they did. She hasn't been able to walk right since. But that wasn't enough for those punks, oh no. Now they gotta come back looking for more trouble. Tell me, were they from the same gang, the, the same club? Well, how do I know which club they belong to? They all look alike and act alike as far as we're concerned. Did they, they wear any insignia, any kind of a club emblem? Yeah, yeah, they had some kind of a firefly or a lightning bug thing in their jacket. I saw that. I saw that, plain as day. Mrs. Sills, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Well, Bernie and I were pretty sensitive about motorcycle drivers now, I guess. Well, we got good reason to be. The whole town hates them since that awful raid last year. Mrs. Sills, please go on. These two men came in here for something to eat. Yeah, came stomping right in, just looking for a fight and yelling for food. What do you mean by yelling? Oh, yelling, yelling, you know. Good food, lots of it. That's what they were yelling. That's an exact quote, isn't it, honey? Didn't they say that? Yes, they did say that. You bet your sweet life they said that. So they started to get smart, see? So I told him to leave. I made him go outside. Well, then all of a sudden, the younger one, the one called Nick, he began slugging me. You should see the way he hit me. And then you called the highway patrol. No. No, I called the patrol. I tell you, Mr. Matthews, you better find those two bums before they end up murdering somebody else. Uh, nobody's been murdered, Mr. Sills. We need the two motorcyclists because they're witnesses. They might tell us how the collision happened. Witnesses? In case the truck driver has to go to trial. Well, what about the way they acted here? You gonna let them get away with that? Bernie, let it go. Well, that's up to you, Mr. Sills. You wanna make a complaint against them? You bet I do. What charge? Disturbing the peace? Well, is that all you can nail on them? Bernie, please. Okay, disturbing the peace. They deserve anything you give them. But if I were you, I'd blame those two psycho bums for putting that officer in the hospital. We can't blame anybody, Mr. Sills. And neither can you. It's up to the court to decide. Right now, we're gonna have to investigate a lot further before we turn it over to the DA's office. Oh, will I be hearing from you? You sure will. Come on, let's go. People are sure bitter about motorcyclists in general, aren't they? Yeah. We better find those guys. They'll be able to tell us more about the accident. Now, if Anders dies, that truck driver's gonna face a prison term. So with or without his confession, we're gonna dig up all the evidence we can. Well, we better find them anyway before they start disturbing the peace in some other town. Two guys on a motorcycle. You know, I don't care how crazy or wild they are. They wouldn't take on a whole town without the rest of their gang with them. This town may look small, but believe me, it's bigger than two men. Come on, let's go. We 
we were wrong. We, we shouldn't have said all that, and, and we never even mentioned the gun. You forget about that. But it isn't exactly fair. Isn't it? Not fair to Alma. Listen, honey. There's a dance over at the park tonight. Bernie, stop. Wouldn't you like to go to the dance? Like the old days. Bernie, please. You know I can't dance anymore. You, you know that. Then don't talk about being fair to them. Those cycle bums deserve anything they get. Let Matthews find out all he wants. I hope they get what's coming to them. A call to the American Motorcycle Association led to the identification of the lightning bug insignia worn by the two recent visitors to Sunland Park. It was the emblem of an accredited cycle club presided over by Ralph Hogan. I don't dig this at all, Mr. Matthews. Why should the throttle jockeys of my club get into a bash with the law? Well, why not? Well, we're approved and accredited by the Motorcycle Association. We're pledged to uphold the laws all the time, on the road or anywhere else. It's those renegade wheel peelers that give you the headaches, not us. Now, look, Hogan, you might have a couple of troublemakers in your club. Eh, I don't know. We've got a good bunch of rod hoppers. It's our job to undo all the harm that's done by these renegade sickle hounds. Of course, we could have a couple of ringers in there that I don't know anything about. Will you do me a favor? Sure thing. Help us weed them out, will you? Why not? When's your next meeting? Sunday morning at my garage. I've got the address. I right, don't tell your members. I'll bring along a couple of people as witnesses. Witnesses? They might help identify the men we're looking for. If they're in my club. Yeah, if. What is it, Dawson? The hospital just called about Jack Anders. Is that the patrolman who got hurt? Yeah, how's he making up? He died less than an hour ago. On Sunday morning, Bernie and Mrs. Sills were taken to Ralph Hogan's garage for the weekly meeting of the Lightning Bug Cycle Club. With Officer Anders dead, a warrant was issued for the truck driver, and he was picked up on a manslaughter charge. Thus, it became even more urgent that the two motorcyclists be identified in case they were able to offer testimony at the trial. Joe, what's the matter? Take a look. Rollins, Dick Rollins. Isn't that the guy from the cafe? Yeah, the guy with the gun. Mr. Matthews. Yeah? There they are. It's them two. He's got the cops with him. Who are the two guys that just came in? Joe Keeley and Nick West. Why? What he's doing here? Well, maybe we ought to fade out. Yeah. All right, hold it, you two. I want to ask you some questions. Well, what for? We haven't done anything. Not much, you haven't. Helped kill a patrolman, that's what you did. We what? Say, what's the matter with this guy? Is he crazy or something? Were you in Sun on Friday morning? Sure, but we just stopped there for something to eat. Don't listen to him, Mr. Matthews. They're liars. I can't be sure of that unless I do listen to him. Come on outside. We can talk there. This isn't going to help our club's reputation one bit. I'm glad the other members aren't here yet. Your club's reputation. Listen, those two bums came roaring into Sunland Park like they were trying to liberate the town or something. It's not like them. Joe and Nick are nice guys. They wouldn't start any trouble. You don't call the highway patrol to chase nice guys. And my wife called the patrol because of them. Right, honey? Well, I... They slugged me, didn't they? Yes, I called the patrol. And that officer is dead because of those two. Look, Mr. Matthews just wants some his witnesses. They might be able to help describe that collision. Well, I got a disturbing the peace complaint against him. I'll have to talk fast to get out of that. First they cripple my wife, then they slug me in the jaw, then they kill a cop. You're stretching things just a little too far, mister. Cop killers in your club. Bernie, stop it. Are you going to let him get away with it? Do you want to be labeled a cop killer because of them? Bernie, you're only starting more trouble. You know, it's because of guys like them that all motorcycle clubs get bad names. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but I wouldn't let any two-bit throttle bomb ruin my reputation. Mr. Hogan, 
My husband gets pretty riled up sometimes. No. He's beginning to make sense in a way. If what he says is true... Th Are you calling me a liar? I've sent for another car to take you and Mrs. Hills home. I'm going with Keeley and Weston to get their statements. Statements? Is that all you do to a couple of cop killers? What? He's right, Mr. Matthews. Those two guys can undo all the good our club has done for motorcycling. If... If you find out that they really started that back then in Sunland Park, why not let us take care of them? I thought they were your buddies. Our club and other outfits like ours, we try to make people realize that throttle jockeys don't have to be tough guys. If Mr. Sills is telling the truth about them, then every sickle hound in the country will be labeled a bum and a renegade and a cop killer. Oh, wait a minute. The only one responsible for the officer's death is the truck driver. Yeah, but they started all the trouble. It never would have happened without them. What kind of trouble are you trying to start, Mr. Sills? When men do wrong, they deserve punishment. The boys in our club will handle them, if we have to. I got a better idea. Turn them over to the people of Sunland Park. <laughs> We'd sure like to even up the score with those two throttle bums. I got a better idea than that. Why don't we rent the Roman Coliseum? Then the people of Sunland Park and the Lightning Bug Motorcycle Club can fight for the two boys. While you and your bloodthirsty mobs are killing each other, we'll let the court decide who's right. I'll see if the Coliseum's available. You'll put on a great show and you won't need any lions either. Both of you, will you listen to me? One of my men was killed in a collision. The truck driver's gonna face a manslaughter charge. Now, the only charge against you boys is disturbing the peace. But we didn't start that trouble. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, please understand one thing. One man is dead, the other faces a prison term. Anything you can tell us will help everybody concerned. Honest, Mr. Matthews, it's like we told you before. We didn't even know a patrolman was chasing us. If we'd known a cop was after us, we wouldn't have kept on going. We're not that dumb. This brings us to the disturbing the peace charge. I have to send everything to the DA's office, unless I can find a good reason to keep it out. Listen, Mr. Matthews, all we did is go to that town and get a bite to eat. We didn't start any trouble. Those people in Sunland Park, they hate anything on two wheels, just because a bunch of renegade rod jumpers messed up their town. All right, the messing up cost ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 in personal property damage, plus the fact eight or nine people were seriously injured. Mr. Sills was very seriously injured. Okay, so they got a right to be bitter. But why take it out on us? All we did is stop at that cafe for breakfast. The next thing we knew, that little guy was kicking us out, calling us bums, and shoving a gun into my stomach. What gun? He had a shotgun. Who did? That guy in the cafe, Sills. Well, let me get this straight. He threatened you with a gun? He sure did. When a guy pokes a gun in your stomach, you get sore. That's when Nick took it away from him and slapped him. Why, sir, I'll bet you would have done the same thing. Well, assault with a deadly weapon, that's a pretty serious charge. I hope you guys are telling me the truth. It's true, Mr. Matthews. I swear it's true, sir. Nothing would have happened if he hadn't shoved us around with the business end of that shotgun. Okay, thanks very much. That'll be all for now. Yes, sir. We'll be around all you want. And thank you, sir. For what? For believing us. What makes you think I believe you? Because we're telling you the truth. about it? It sounded pretty straight to me. Here's the criminal records report. They've never been in trouble before. Not even for traffic violations. They look all right. Yeah, except for these. Signed statements by Mr. Sills. Also Mrs. Sills. Not one of them mentions the shotgun that Keeley and West were talking about. Well, the gun wasn't fired, though, was it? No, but if they're telling the truth, that's assault with a deadly weapon. We better investigate this before we send it to the DA's office. Sills might have used it in self-defense. Why didn't he mention it? Why didn't Mrs. Sills mention it? What are they afraid of? You know, Dorsey, there's two things that bother me. Number one, motorcycle bums, the real ones, the one that gives us all the trouble. They go out in a mob. The bigger the mob, the tougher they get. The other thing that bothers me is the Sunland people themselves. Well, I can understand they're rather sensitive about motorcycles, and I know that Bernie Sills would like to get even for what they did to his wife. Yeah, but would he make a phony complaint against them? Would he use a gun on them and then perjure himself just to get them in trouble? I don't know. If he would, this is the guy we want, not Keeley and West. 
Well, how are we going to find out? I'll tell you. Have a motorcycle officer meet us tomorrow on Highway 12 out of Sunland. Tell him not to shave. Borrow a black jacket from Hogan with a lightning bug emblem on it. I want to see how far Sills' bitterness will go, but this time you and I are going to be witnesses. Early the next morning, a highway patrol officer disguised as a motorcyclist received his final instructions and headed out toward Sunland Park. According to a prearranged schedule, the cyclist was due to arrive about 10 minutes after the witnesses were staked out in the town. on the 50-yard line. Good morning. What do you want? Thought I'd have some breakfast. You can sure work up an appetite on those wheels. You'd better try someplace else. There's no place else in town, is there? OK. Go on in. I'll, I'll be right there. All right. Where's she going? I don't know, but she doesn't look very happy. Another cycle bump. I heard him ride up. Oh, Bernie, don't do anything. Please, there, there'd been enough trouble. There's our friend Sills. You'd think they'd leave well enough alone. You'd think those hoodlums would know better. But they're not hoodlums. I think we'd better teach them to know better. Once and for all. Oh, Bernie, wait. Wait, please. Carrying a gun. Hey, what's the big idea? Just teaching you guys a lesson. Think we've seen enough? You know it. Let's go. You bums never learn, do you? Well, maybe this will teach you something. Maybe this will make up for the damage that's been caused by wise guys like you. Is that the same gun you used on Joe and Nick West, mister? What? Oh, yeah, that's right. They're buddies of yours. Lightning bugs. <laughs> yeah, it's the same gun. Only I didn't get to fire it. Maybe this time I will. Don't tread on it. He happens to be one of our men. Highway Patrol. But, uh, listen, Mr. Matthews, I'll tell you just how it happened. Fine. Why don't you tell me who provoked this incident? Well, you see, Mr. Matthews, uh, this time it was different. Uh, this man, he come up... Remember, happens to be one of our men. Bernie Sills, you're a fool. You're a miserable, stupid, hateful fool. Why don't you tell the truth? Why don't you tell me the truth, Mrs. Sills? I will. I kept quiet for his sake because he had himself believing his lies. But I've had enough now. He's not worth it. Not the way he acts. What's the matter with you? I'm doing this for you. I've been trying to even up the score for you. Getting even won't make me walk any better. Well, you're so full of bitterness, you don't know what's right or wrong anymore. Is that right being a walk that way? You like walking that way? Do you? It could be worse. Maybe I do limp. But at least I can walk with my head up. And, and you can't do that anymore. I, I give you a new statement, Mr. Matthews. Thank you. Come on, let's go. You, you mean you're going to arrest me? Assault with a deadly weapon. We got you on two counts. But it's those motorcycle bums. It's their fault that officer got killed. The truck driver's going to have to face that charge. As far as Keeley and West are concerned, we'll drop that one, too. Come on. Oh, look, Mr. Matthews, you can't blame me for being sore. After that raid last year, after what those hoodlums did to this town, to my wife. Your bitterness is your own business. When it interferes with the law, then it becomes our business. Okay, take him away. Thank you, Mrs. Sills. The Highway Patrol story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, 
The clowns at the circus, they're real funny. But on the highway, they're murder. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.